boxing truth here. Now that that chump Andre War retired, there is a vacancy on who is the best fighter in the world. At least on paper, who is the heir to the pound for pound throne. Andre Ward really never defended his claim, never defended the beat Kovalev, was gifted that position, decided to duck. All these young lions, all these up and coming hungry fighters, the Peter Bievs, the Gavatsviks, the Dmitry Bevels, the Badu Jacks, and he ducked the third Kovalev fight. The plan was to get them to fight a few times, regain some interest for a third fight. But Ward didn't want no more. Didn't want to fight for the type of money he's not accustomed to seeing, especially for these tough upcoming guys. So he decided to walk away. Decided to decided to retire. So now there's a vacancy at number one. And of course, people are going to have their opinions. They're going to put a, a hyped American fighter who has beaten nobody in Terrence Crawford. They're going to want to put a guy in Lomachenko whose best win is Nicholas Walters, who was, in my eyes, coming off a loss to Jason Sosa when he fought him. He's lost to Salido, Golovkin, didn't beat Canelo Alvarez. Canelo didn't beat Golovkin officially. So, Canelo, in my eyes, is the heir to the pound for pound throne. He is going to be the guy that's going to take over the sport. He's going to be number one in that position for quite some time. He's going to have the strongest claim. He's going to have the strongest resume. And he's going to be one of the most skilled, best fighters in the world. Add that all together and you have yourself a pound for pound king a rightful pound for pound king with a solid claim and you can't take that away from him all he has to do is definitively de defeat Golovkin in the rematch I thought he beat him the first time won as many as seven or eight rounds but of course a lot of the rounds were close people have different opinions I'm not gonna get mad at you if you thought Golovkin won the fight You're not gonna get mad at you if you thought it was a draw it was a close fight so now we need the tiebreaker this is the fight to determine the number one pound for pound king. A new pound for pound king with a more solid claim than Andre Ward ever had. We need a definitive outcome and that is the direction both teams seem to want to go because it makes all the sense in the world. Why take an interim fight? Why put yourself at risk in, in, in losing or getting injured and just pretty much derailing a very big rematch between Canelo and Triple G? an event that would be bigger than the first fight even. I'm hearing that the pay-per-view numbers were, were great, well over a million buys, that is healthy for the sport, that is good news. A rematch is only only means bigger business, bigger more interest worldwide. So why not do the tiebreaker next? There's no reason to take any interim fights. And if Golovkin is assured a deal can be completed, he is willing to wait eight months in order to get back in the ring against Canelo Alvarez. As long as a deal can be made, there's no reason to take an interim fight. I'm, I'm hearing some Golovkin fans saying that Triple G should bypass the rematch with Canelo. I mean, why would he? It's, the, his, it's his biggest payday out there. It's the biggest fight out there for him. And he didn't win. He didn't get the victory. He didn't get his hands raised. He got the first blemish of his career, a draw with Canelo Alvarez. So why wouldn't you want him to go after that rematch and try to right that wrong. Because I know you Golovkin fans are nervous. Secretly, I don't want him to take that rematch because you know his days are numbered. You are now starting to realize and starting to figure out for yourselves that he's not the fighter that, that he's been advertised. That he's not, as been, he's not as good as advertised. Maybe he was this monster five years ago when he first appeared in HBO Airways. Could have had a chance to prove it had he fought Dmitry Pirov. But that wasn't the case. He ended up fighting Praska, a decent fighter. Destroyed him, but he hasn't looked explosive in quite some time. Hasn't had a big time performance in quite some time. It's coming off three shaky performances. Was getting all this legendary status in the, in the boxing gyms. Was destroying all these, these world-class cruiserweights and knocking out heavyweights. Then he steps in the ring against Danny Jacobs and fails to deliver a big time performance. And Right there, I saw that Golovkin wasn't as good as advertised. He's not this monster that people are saying that he is. At least not 
what Abel, Sam Abel Sanchez, his trainer, is portraying him as to be. He hasn't proven it. He's proven that he's formidable, that he's a really good fighter, that he's world class, that he's he's one of the top fighters in the world. But he's not this invincible monster force that people are describing him as. I haven't seen it. He's definitely tough to beat, but he's definitely shown that it's not impossible, that he is beatable, that you can win rounds off him, and that he is limited in terms of offensive versatility. He's not the most versatile guy offensively. He he's effective with his jab, but he's in his last couple of fights he's had he's having trouble showing more than just an effective jab, which wasn't always effective at times against Canelo Alvarez. But this is a fight that should be happening next. No need for interim fights. This fight's going to determine number 1 in the pound for pound. There should be no argument. There shouldn't be any argument when it comes to that. There's nobody else that has a stronger claim than these two. All we need is a definitive outcome. And I believe we'll get that if the fight happens sometime next year. I think Canelo has a lot of room to improve. I think he can make some minor adjustments. The conditioning problem, that's just a... Uh, that's always going to be there. But it didn't bother him in the fight with Golovkin. He was able to to be effective going backward. He was able to be effective against the ropes, which usually does in all of his fights. He takes breathers. And Golovkin, he had a supposedly dead man in front of him, a guy who was gassing out, but yet he couldn't knock him out. He couldn't really do much offensively besides hit him with a few jabs here and there, a few power shots here and there. He could have did more since he had a guy that was backing up in front of him and going to the ropes and, and trying to take breathers, but he wasn't able to do much, which is why the fight was so close. But Canelo is your heir to the pound for pound throne. He's going to make the adjustments. He's going to make the improvements. He's going to be more confident. And he's going to do a number on. He's going to do a job on Golovkin in the rematch. If Golovkin's team want to keep winning or go their separate ways, then they'll take lesser fights. But they're going to, they're going to take the rematch. And that's going to be the end of Triple G. At least as his reign as middleweight champion. Canelo, it's his time. Whether you like it or not, like he said a year ago, he's the best fighter in the world. And right now, it's the era of Canelo. And Triple G, his days are numbered as middleweight champion. He was lucky to get a draw against Canelo the first, in the first fight. He was lucky to get a draw. Seemed to be happy that he got a draw. Now, the rematch is in the works, and your boy's days are numbered. I know you Triple G fans are nervous. Could be the end for Golovkin as middleweight champion, as Canelo is coming, and it's his time. It's the era Canelo, and he is the heir of the pound for pound throne. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.